Welcome back in What's Right with Nick Wright podcast YouTube show where we are counting down the 50 greatest players of the last 50 years in the NBA. And even though it's basically Kareem's rookie year to now, I would feel personally remiss if I didn't at least acknowledge guys who belong on any NBA list if they weren't just too old for it. So the guys, this isn't the entire list of guys who were too old to make to make this list, but it's a partial list. I'm gonna go through them in a somewhat of a chronological order. So, I, you know, Bill Russell, Elgin Baylor, Bob Pettit and George Mikan were the two greatest players of the pre-Wilt Russell era of NBA history. Uh, Bob Pettit's, you know, career accolades still hold up. Uh, George Mikan was a dominant, dominant force in the league. So those guys have to be on any list. Obviously, Russell, So I think Russell somehow is underrated. He won 11 titles in 13 years. He won the league MVP five times, and that was back when the players were voting on it. Everybody knows Wilt. Wilt had a 50-point-per-game season. Same season, he averaged more than 48 minutes per game. He won an assist title. He just didn't win enough. If Wilt won two more titles, he's probably... Babe Ruth of basketball. But even 100 years later, people would be like, ah, that's the greatest player ever. In that same era, you have Elgin Baylor and Jerry West competing with those guys. It's one of the reasons Jerry's one and eight in the finals. You also have Oscar Robertson, the original triple-double. Those guys have to be on any all-time list. They're just too old for mine. Another great guy that is not the caliber of those players, but would be, is on the NBA 75 list and justifiably is Willis Reed. The reason I'm mentioning him is Willis Reed is the youngest guy who's too old for this list. So if that helps your mind's eye, if you're an NBA historian, as we're going through this top 50, you're like, wait, why didn't such and such make it? Why didn't John Havlicek make it too old? Anybody who's Willis Reed's era generation or older does not make this list. So that's kind of the cutoff there. Now, here are guys who were eligible, but did not make it. Now, this, this will not spoil the list entirely because they are because there are certain guys that made the top 75 that didn't, not only did they not make my top 50, but they weren't even my honorable mentions. I'm not going to name any names, Reggie Miller, but Reggie Miller, these guys 17, three and three for his career was never even sniffed an MVP. Why is he this consensus top 75 guy? I don't know. But let's go through some of these guys. So Wes Unseld has the top end to make this list, but not the body of work. He has an MVP and he has a finals MVP, but he only has one truly great season. Also, Wes, and I'm not trying to bore you with old Wes Unseld facts, but Wes Unseld's finals MVP is one of the most unfair thefts in NBA history. We don't have to get into it, but we are gonna name a guy who's on this list, who made it, who obviously, clearly, and by any fair definition, should have been MVP of that finals. He somehow doesn't get it. His name's Elvin Hayes. And so, Wes Unseld, great player, uh, and you know would be on the top 60, but not good enough for the top 50, in my opinion. Dave Cowens. He won a couple MV or a couple rings. He won an MVP. He just missed the cut. Adrian Dantley, two scoring titles, and he's a, you know, he's a what if. Would the Pistons have won if they kept him? In 88, the Pistons should win the title, probably. I mean, they're they're up 3-2 on the Lakers. There's a you know, the famous uh Isaiah Thomas sprained ankle game. There is some people feel a phantom foul call uh that sends Kareem to the line. The Lakers escape game six. They then win in seven because Isaiah is crippled and is a shell of himself. The Pistons then trade Dantley. So Dantley misses out on the championships. Would they have won with him? Maybe, I don't know. He just misses out. Another guy from that era who just missed out, Alex English. I think, I'm not certain, I think he's the highest on the all-time scoring list of guys that didn't make my list. The problem is it's all he did. He makes one conference finals, that's it. I know my guy Colin Cowherd loves him some Alex English. To me, it, he's out. He, he, he just barely misses the cut, but he is out. We also got to go Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce's finals MVP. 
Now, is it a legit finals MVP? Maybe. I, was he the best player on that team? Absolutely not. But he he was the was he the best player in those finals? Maybe. He also is a top 20 all-time scorer. However, only one time was he first or second team All-NBA. I feel he was the third best of the big three. All of those things, in my estimation, have to matter. So Paul Pierce, he just misses the cut. Ray Allen, listen, the shot alone almost gets him on the list. You can almost make the argument Ray Allen because he hit maybe the most iconic shot in NBA history. That alone should be enough to get him on this list. However, I can't put him on it because he was never an MVP candidate, really. He was never a first team all NBA consensus guy. I and in my he was he was a great part of some great teams, but never the leading part. And so I love Ray. Ray was a tough omission, but he doesn't make the list. Tracy McGrady. We talked about him in the first segment if you were listening. Tracy McGrady is probably the best of all the players that as far as what their career upside was, he is probably the best of all of them that did not make this list. He is probably the guy that his a you know, he was an MVP candidate. He was a scoring champion. However, his lack of playoff success, and we went over it, so I don't have to belabor it here, is so glaring when compared to the guys who made this list that I think he was a fair omission from my list and a fair omission from the top 75 list. I want to go back in history just a moment before we get to Jokic. Also not on the list is Pistol Pete Maravich. Pistol Pete, he's another, there was no winning. No winning whatsoever. He didn't have much longevity. He was on, when I did this thing initially, Pistol Pete was there, and then I removed him in favor of someone else after really deep diving into it. Iconic player, amazing scorer, 40 a game in college with no three-point line, but we told you college stuff doesn't matter. Pistol Pete not there. And then the two current guys who probably will be on the NBA's 100 at 100, but I don't feel have done enough to make this list. Damian Lillard and Nikola Jokic. Also, by the way, Clay Thompson, but Clay to me was not a hard omission, nor was Kyrie. To me, if we're talking about guys that should make it that didn't, Dame and Jokic are the ones that you got to discuss, okay? So Dame does have an obviously elite resume. The problem is... He just hasn't done it long enough. If you're, so he's four time first or second team. That's, that's valid. 25 points per game. That's valid. But you've been to one conference finals. You got washed out in those conference finals. You have never been, in my opinion, forget considered the best player in the league. I don't think there's ever been a moment you've been considered the best guard in the league. And because you're still active, you haven't played long enough. So, you're never in the best of your position. You've never been on a real contender. You only have one playoff run past round two. It's just not enough. I, I think he'll make the next list. It's just not enough. And then there's Jokic. And I, when I talked on social media about that I'm doing this project, uh, people were like, oh my God, can't wait to see where you have Jokic ranked. I was like, well, I don't have him ranked. Nick, that's so, un it's not unfair. And I'm not saying Jokic is not going to end up being on all of these lists eventually. But if the world stopped today, he flatly does not have the resume of other guys who didn't make the list. I know he has a league MVP, but so does Dave Cowens, and I didn't put Dave Cowens on this list. So does Derrick Rose. and I didn't, Derrick Rose, by the way, spoiler alert, not on this list. He has been two-time All-NBA first team, and he'll either be first or second team this year, one time all NBA second team. So he the last three years, he's been spectacular. He also has only been out of round two once, and nobody's expecting him to get out of round two this year. And he has the one year where he was an MVP candidate last year where he won it. This year is another MVP candidate. So it is not a knock on Jokic. It's just if you have no championships, no finals appearances, and only four outstanding seasons, 
How can I put you on the list over a guy like Adrian Dantley? How can I put you on the list over a guy like Dave Cowens? I can't. Those guys didn't even make the list. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.